urban legend. Wow. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> well, he is actually. He, he is, is an urban legend. He, he's a legend in his own mind. That's for dang on <laughs> shit. Yeah, I think we all are, right? We all are out there <laughs> looking for opportunities in the marketplace, right? That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, we got the whole crew. Who are we missing? Is uh, is Irene coming? Greg, we're missing Greg. Where's Greg? There he is. Know. Speak of the devil right here. There he is. Gregory's there. All right, there we go. Cool. We're missing Greg. Is Irene coming? Did I hear? Yeah, she was supposed to be on. Let me. I'm, te I'm texting her right now. I'm sorry. Whatever. Let's see if we can get here. We got, we got our, we got folks coming in. We got a bunch of mics. A couple marks. Jay Talbot always coming in. I love. It. Good to see you guys. We'll uh, we'll get cranking in just a minute. So the question today, the icebreaker today, is who is the most famous? First of all, where are you from? Oh wait, man, I have to do this in the chat. Hold on, hold on. I have to I have to make sure everybody can do this. Everyone can do it with everyone. Okay, here we go. So the question of the day: Who's the most famous person you've ever met? In person, where are you from, and who is the most famous person you've ever met in person? Is the question. Put that into the chat, and and we'll 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 talk about that. So, how about you, Rafa? Who's the most famous person you've ever met? Oh God, I've met. I'd have to you think met a lot it. of famous. I've met presidents and like directors of national intelligence, and oh, I'd have to think about that actually. But let's just go with. Uh, Go with somebody else, and I'll just let me think about that for a second. All right, everybody, think about it. Greg, anybody want to throw in? And I'll, I'll they tell met? you who I've met. Who did you meet? I had lunch. On my right was Nelson Mandela. Wow. And on my left was Muhammad Ali. Woof. I ah. sat at the same <laughs> table with. Them. They were both next to me. I, I don't. I don't know if anybody's going to beat that one because that's too nah, heavy yeah, that's, hitters uh, right there. That's hard to upstage, my man. That's oh, hard. Man. You got some, you got, you got some, in that's the, a pop in the game. chat. So that's the question, everybody pop in the chat. Where are you from? And Bob Hope and Charlton Heston on the same night. Now, dude, you might have, that's, I got to tell you, uh, Peter, your name, Dave Lowe. You got to, you got to change your, your yeah. name. I know, okay. I know that I, I have complexes, but I don't want people to. to I impersonate to, you at conferences. I, yeah, that I can, <laughs> hang on a second. Where, where are you? <clears throat> Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got you, Peter. Peter, what, how do you do it? What's your that Timbus? T I M B A S. B A S, not U S. We made that mistake yeah. before. All right, Mike Love, the Beach Boys. Yeah. I mean, Mark, yeah. So, uh, Mark, Mark, Mike Love from the Beach Boys. I got you, Mark. I'm sorry, dude. My, not quite there. All right. So, mine. I think the most famous person that I've ever met was Robert Plant. Wow. That's not bad. It's pretty good. At Hilton Head. Um, and we actually, I actually got to talk to him for a minute. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't super googly like everybody else was. I mean, if, let me tell you what, everybody can ask, answer this question. Who would you meet that you would turn into like a third grade school girl? Right. <laughs> ooh, ooh, let me go first. <laughs> I, have, I have two. I'm going to do a picture. Who? So, who that? Is it Smokey the Bear? <laughs> Jennifer Aniston. Oh, oh Jennifer Aniston. Jen and me. What's That's the bear? Hysterical. Bart the Bear. Who? Uh, Bart the Bear. I Bart barely bear. recognized him. Yeah. I have no idea. Then, uh, I would guy. have to say, I would have to say, let's see. Um, so I've met a couple of presidents, became presidents, right? One of them was Bill Clinton and the other one was uh, George H. Bush. Wow. Right? Um, and then as far as like celebrities, I would have to say uh, Curacao Jazz Festival with Alicia Keys backstage. That's that, cool. I think that's wow, pretty, that's I, very I think cool. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. All right. Well, uh, okay. So Sally White's got Jennifer Aniston and Tony Bennett. That's good. Ooh, Tony Bennett. Oh, yes. That's a winner. Yeah. And I, I know I've met other famous people, but the one that I know I would turn, there's two that would I turned into a schoolgirl. One is that guy right there. Michael MJ. Jordan? Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't wow, be able to handle impressive. it. For sure. For sure. 
he's and got the, the other Air Jordans, one, and he's got the Air Jordans to prove it. <laughs> and, and the other one is this guy right here, which obviously, oh. if I met him, I can't handle it. I know I wouldn't be able to handle it. All right, <laughs> so I just saw him the other night at, uh, at uh, in in Baltimore, and seventy three year old still burning the house down. So what's yours, Brian Hebel? Who's your famous, most famous or pe person? I, you know what? I don't think I've ever met anybody famous, to be honest with you. Wow. So I'm, I'm the most just, famous person. I'm famous. Uh, I, yeah. You know, you know, I went to the same high school as Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs, but other than that, but he That's was pretty cool. seven That's pretty cool. years younger than me. Um, so I don't know. He's I a cool guy. anybody famous other than you, Dave. I think you're the most That's famous. Right. I'm, the, I'm the most famous or people. That, you <laughs> definitely got to get out more. I do. <laughs> All right. Okay, folks, you probably wonder what in the world did you get yourself into today? So first things first, in here, you can let us know who you met with the most famous person. But what's your one word for the federal government? Put that into the chat. When that, what's the first word that comes to your mind when it's up, somebody says the federal government is boom? That's it. All right. Where are we? We're $528 billion has been spent already. We're, well, that's not right. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, this is wrong. We are now in, we're not in Q2 anymore. I thought I fixed that. Q3, we're right? We're in Kansas, we're not in Kansas not anymore. Not in Kansas anymore. Dorothy. Nor are we in Kentucky, Colonel. Right. Well, funny For you those of you who don't know why I'm calling him Colonel, <laughs> hold on, I gotta stop sharing so everybody can see it as big. All right, show, show that card again. Well, I'm, I'll, I'll do more than that. I'll give you the actual, uh, signed proclamation from the governor of Kentucky. Wow. And that's this right here. Uh, so that makes me a, a life, you know, that's a, that's a, a Kentucky uh, Colonel, a Kentucky Colonel. And here's Colonel. the, uh, the pin of our honorable order. And here's the badge that I just got in the mail. You got, so, a, wow. you got a Colonel bag. So impressive. for those of you who don't know what this guy named me, what is my, we were at the, the Senate office building, right. and I am affectionately uh, considered the, the who? The token gringo. That's I'm the token gringo. That's it, the token gringo. <laughs> so I was there for the, for the Hispanic Chamber of Com Commerce, and Hispanic, I am not. So now I get to be able to name him, and he is officially now the Kentucky Fried Cuban. That's it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, I had to get that out. <laughs> all right so so you're, if, a, you're if, a mess if, there are a bunch of people here that are saying what who are these knuckleheads we will get yeah. to that in a minute uh so anyway for those of you who who are haven't haven't get back on the track here uh 528 billion dollars spent 100 1.17 trillion left so it's 1170 billion just in case a trillion just can't get your head around it so what has to happen, just like last year, we have, the government has to spend every cent of it, 1,600 billion. <laughs> so there's 1,700 billion. That's has a to be, whole lot of cheese. That's a cheese, a lot of cheese. So we just ran this report. We're going to make this available on samradar.com. So this is the updated report. As you can see, it's tracking exactly the same way it usually does, which is why we use Sam Radar. Because 1.48% is posting on sam.gov, and we want to find the rest of it. If you want to compete for the 98% that's not landing anywhere in the public, you have got to get on Sam Radar, and you're going to want to do this soon because the Federal Business Council is coming up, and this is going to blow us up. It is absolutely fantastic. So we want to make sure that we get on the short list. If you look on the right-hand side, almost all, take a look at that, almost all of of the 91% uh, have five or fewer competitors. You know it's not going on sand.gov if it has less than five, right? Very, very much. Now, what do we want to do now? It's Q3. We got to get our company positioned for this year and next year. I just talked to somebody today. He he called me and he said, Hey, you know, um, you know, we want we want some of the EV stuff. And, you know, the, he does construction and electrical. I said, that's fantastic. I said, make sure you're managing your expectations. Probably going to take you some time, 18 to 24 months to get into the federal space. He said, well, that's, that's disturbing. I said, well, I'm glad I'm, the, I'm glad I'm telling you the truth. 
Because there's a lot of people that just say, hey, the money's going to fall from the sky. Right, Rafa? <laughs> it's just going to rain. <laughs> it's just going to rain. And it don't rain. It will rain once you make it rain. You're the rainmaker. And that's what, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So participating is easy. Throw your stuff into the chat if you want to let us know. Um, we we got uh, we got the colonel, and we were we're just talking about in the chat for for uh, what is your one word for the federal government? We got a bunch in there. We'll get to. If you have any questions or anything, just raise your hand, and we'll be able to do it or pop it in the Q and A so we can keep things organized. Real quick disclaimer: If you're here from industry, doesn't guarantee an award. We're not GSA. We don't pretend to be GSA. And participation doesn't guarantee to where there you go. So the Govies, if you're here at a Govy, uh, and 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 Brian Hebel used to be a Govy, so now he's on the top side, but he used to be on the bottom side, and he he uh he would have to we'd have to have this disclaimer to say it's not an endorsement to purchase from any vendor, otherwise he gets in trouble, right, Brian? Right. I'm gonna keep you straight, Dave, after being a contracting officer for 32 years. That's but I right. Love what, love what you're doing, and it's pretty amazing what you're doing. So yeah, we we love it here. So here's what we're gonna do: connect you with experts. We're gonna discuss what works and highlight our, our the people that are here, uh, because they each one of these folks that are here has skills or products that you can use to help advance your, you in the space. Specifically, the one that's up top is SamRadar.com. We've been talking about it uh, because you can't do it alone. If there's anything that 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 everybody that's ever been in this industry, you can't do it alone. You can do it. On, on the cheap, sometimes just got to keep on pounding at it. We can talk about how that works. So why did you decide to join us today? Are you here because you're new to federal contracting? You have federal contracts as a sub and want to prime? Were you one of the 116,000 federal prime contracting winners in 2022? Or some nut sent you an email? Oh, we have some Weisenheimers. I, that was probably Jay Talbot. I would, I would bet. That that's Jay Talbot picking that one. Yeah, they, they want to meet the colonel. <laughs> right, yeah, that's they the want to meet the colonel. That's what it is. So we will have some handouts in the chat. If it's not there yet, it will be there momentarily. So what's the one word that to describe the federal marketplace? Let's get to some of them that are here in the chat first, and that way we can see it. So if you popped it in here, complex, right? Um, and mind-boggling. That's hyphenated, Jay. Uh, red tape, <laughs> isn't that the truth? Uh, behind, slow, isn't that the truth, Michael? All right. I knew it was you, Jay. Fragmented, <laughs> complicated. All right, so look at this. So these are the ones that came in from, from when we did it coming in. Frustrating opportunity. You can see that there's a ton of things here. Some of these are negative and some of these can be actual positive, but um, a lot of times it's on the negative side. Uh, we have folks Dave, saying that- Dave. Yes, hey, can you do can you do one for me? What what do in, uh, people inside government think of government contractors? So you oh, know, <laughs> you're the only one. So go ahead. No, do, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, I'm you, kidding. now you put it up. So <laughs> you you, you can obviously say you know knuckleheads, uh, greedy, anything anything you want to say is fine. Um, and all of these things are true, right? So bloated, confusing, unfair. We had fair on. Take a look at this. So we had some folks that say say it's fair. Who who actually thinks this is right? Um, I just I'm just wondering. Uh, but if you you have this one, then you have unfair, right? You have the next one is unfair here. Byzantine rules. That's one time I let like two uh, two words come through. Um, untapped, difficult, bureaucratic, necessary, utilitarian, busy, inefficient, right? All those things. Uh, here's a couple more. Equality, secure. <laughs> I, I would so secure once you're winning, right? You, you can secure your stuff. Um, could be more efficient, you think? Uh, no offense to you, Brian. Uh, that's all your cohorts now. Um, a reservoir, good old boys club, strange, love it. All right, then we. So anybody got any more necessary evil? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. There we go. We love that. So um, yeah, we, we'll. Love all those. So uh, there's a couple of things that we do have that, uh, that people say that this will be the best webinar ever. And some of these are a little older, but uh, Stephen, uh, your team will provide attendees way forward to win federal contract. That's exactly what we want. We want a way forward. Um, and then how about this? It says, if the presenter presents a platform with proven results, 
I do believe we have that, Mr. Roth, Do Colonel. Colonel Doctor, how do you how do you do that, Colonel Doctor? Uh, I'm gonna have to wear three lapels now. <laughs> you, you're gonna, man. You're gonna need an extra long, long card for all those things that go behind. <laughs> yeah, you. exactly. Yeah. All right. So Sorry. proven results. We will be talking about Sam Radar because that's why we are here. We're here to help do that. So we're gonna get you done here. All right. Let's. There's a. There are most folks here. We're gonna share this out. Most folks here are new to federal contracting. Some have subs. Some of them were actually the prime winners. That's fantastic. Some nut sent an email. I appreciate that, Jay. Knew it was you. Um, and we it's about split. New folks. That's fantastic. So we love, we absolutely love that you guys have joined us today. All right. So the questions today, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the same questions we had last month. Because I, 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 we have Brian here. We have other folks here. Is Julie here, by the way? Did Julie make it? Julie Irene made. is on. I Irene's am. on. Hold on. I mean, how did she come in with your? There she is. Hold on, Irene. I got to make you a co-host so, so you can see. There you go. See you. Thank All right. You. So make sure we have everybody. All right. So, what is the? What does the government tell you to do? And does it work? Do you do relationships matter? And how do you find and interact with decision makers? Because some of this is going to be pertinent to what we're doing next week. Because, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Real quick, I'm Dave Lowe. I'm the CEO of ISI Federal. I'm also the founder and creator of, of Sam Radar and some of the other systems that we have. I will be at the GPC event on next Wednesday. And who else is coming? Peter's coming, right, Peter? Yeah, we've got a booth and we'll be there to support you. All right. And Brian, you're coming. I'm coming. Yep. Gray's coming. Clark, you going to be in the house. What's that? I said Clarky's going to be in the house. Clarky's going to be in the house, and, and and the Colonel, the Colonel, Doctor Colonel, Cuban. Yeah, I'm making, coming, I'm right? making arrangements today. All right, fantastic. So the only one that's not coming is Sally, right? She's hiding. Look at her. She's hiding. I am a loser. However, I have another client in Dallas. I have to be at their conference. I feel terrible about it, but I'd love to be virtual if you can give me a link. You know. Uh, we will we will we'll figure out a way to get you there in some form or fashion. I'll be there. And, and so and so everybody knows I have a very special guest that's going to be joining me at the booth. You're going to be able to meet the famous <laughs> Tom Cruise. Wow! You can get your picture taken. Get your picture taken with Tom Cruise at wow. the Sam Radar booth. So that okay. if that's not enough incentive, you can actually say I got your ticket. But you'd have to be. Um, you get Pinocchio if you say you met Tom Cruise, but you can say that you uh, got your picture taken. All right, real quick. Uh, ISI Federal has been around since 2009. We've helped folks with direct and indirect sales, as you can see. We help people get smart about the marketplace. We help reach stakeholders. We use GovBrief to do that, for to reach the govies, because it's very difficult to do that any other way. Um, and the next thing that, we, that I would say is we do that using industry briefing. We go to industry take industry and send them uh, using interagency briefings. Um, and we do this all the time. And as a matter of fact, we have a couple of them coming up uh, soon. We just did one for, for, sa uh, for Salesforce. We have one coming up for AI, but it, we use this all the time because it generates, it generates um, responses <clears throat> and interaction. So uh, the next opening is 6-1. So if you want to get in, get in now because we stop it at uh, in August, the middle of August, because they're not going to come. Why don't they come in August, Brian? Too busy. Too busy. Why are you too busy? Uh, because we wait to the end of the fiscal year, which, <laughs> yeah. is, mind, which is mind boggling. I think the term was <laughs> or complicated or uh, I don't know what the, I didn't see any lazy ones in there. So I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> Believe me, it's in there. All right. So, um, so yeah, when you, so when you think about who you want to reach, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up because we're gonna. I think this is gonna work. Who do you want to reach? Who who do you want to reach? All right. Let me see what this one says. Hold on, guys. I I didn't check this before. Here we go. Who do you want to reach? You want to reach? Buyers, program managers, project managers, prime contract holders so you can sub, prime con contracting holders so you can sell them because that's two different avenues, right? Federal employees. Somebody here wants to sell to federal employees, Brian Hebel. Now. 
And tell so you actually they do have saw, they should they should have came and seen me six years ago and yeah. But you but you actually sell you actually train cores and, and contracting offers. Yeah, yeah. We yep. do that now. We do that now with training on CPARs and how to evaluate a proposal. We do a simulated technical evaluation panel for government employees and industry. <clears throat> yep. So uh it's been a nice ride. It's all awesome. retiring six years. I'm curious what everybody's gonna say. So um I'm I'm surprised uh federal buyers as opposed to one of the other topics, actually, Dave. Uh and that, that that's why we're going to make sure that we uh, and, and Rob, I'm letting you be able to share your video too if you want to. Um, but yeah, if you, it's it is interesting because all of these people, huh? But we're, let's just see how how it how it shapes out. Um, so yeah, we will be talking about Sam Radar in a few minutes because it is it is a game changer. We also monitor Sam.gov because. Well, Sam.gov is Sam.gov. Do we have to say anything else? Rafael Marrero? No, I don't think so. No. Uh, we also market direct to GSA. And with us today, we do have the, the colonel, the doctor, the sexy blue glasses man himself, <laughs> Rafael Marrero. And he helps with capability statements. Um, and it's and he created our our uh, our marketing material for us. So it's awesome. Uh, videos, websites, business cards. That's his lane. I'm just going to cruise through this real quick so that that we can get we'll get into the meat and potatoes. We're going to pop these back up in a few minutes and you guys can talk a little bit. But if you see if you get this kind of face that if somebody says, hey, looks, you know, if you, you ask need for a capability, capability statement, got to have one. Yeah. If you don't have one, you need one, because if you don't look like you, you belong, guess what? You don't. You don't. And you also do the you do uh, capabilities, video capabilities, briefings, and business cards, business cards, um, yep. and websites. So we appreciate what you do. If you need any of these things, make sure you reach out to Raphael. He'll we'll, we'll pop some things up in a few minutes. Greg Clark, on the other hand, he actually does double. the paperwork stuff, which I hate, as everybody knows. So proposal writing, GSA schedules, and other contract vehicles. What do we mean by other contract vehicles, Greg Clark? Well, a contract vehicle is um, an IDIQ, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. The, the, um, an agency is going to award, is going to get a pool of contractors together who meet the criteria of their choosing and, and then issue task orders to them or multiple agencies can, can use it, that kind of thing. Yep. So it's not just GSA schedules that are that are out there. That's the there's granddaddy all, of them. All. That's the granddaddy, but there's a lot more. There's a lot more out there. And Julie, who usually joins us today, she's actually helping me uh, with my presentation next week, and uh, amongst other things, uh, she is she does speech writing and creating presentations and and delivering of those presentations. She does work with the Gubbies as well as herself. And Sally White, the Uber Master Connector networker we're going to be talking a lot about that today things that you do sally so i'm going to make sure you're you're uh, in the loop for that peter tim is helps with the with the funding so if you need a contract funded that's what he does any types of funding you you, you need he can help you he understands the government and helps folks get money uh, irene morales she helps get uh, certifications so if you have a socioeconomic certification that you you would like um, or you think you want one, or you might be able to get one. That's what Irene does. And uh, as as Brian was saying, he has a little bit of experience from the inside. Everybody else on this team is from the outside, just throwing stuff at people like Brian all the time, right, Brian? Yep. And I did write a book in 2015. If you're if you're a beginner, and if you're not, it's got some great tips in it. Just FYI. But uh, I've trained 4,000 people since COVID hit with the training that we really provide an inside perspective of how we think inside government really to help you win contracts or manage what you have. So it's been really yep. great working with former colleagues to create training that's really valuable to industry. And uh, I am not going to say what we've been talking about for the past three weeks, Brian, no. but I will say this, stand the heck by because Sam Radar is flipping the world upside down, isn't it, Brian? It is. It is, it, Dave. It's amazing what you've created. It is crazy. And just suffice it to say that there's other stuff that's coming. So if you are not on samradar.com, 
you want to get on now because it it's going to be cheaper right now and you're going to be part of a, of a pretty pretty cool movement so here here's what we got so far who do you want to reach brian is what we got we got 77% said federal buyers, 31% said program managers. You mentioned that this was interesting. Why is it interesting to you? Well, you know what? I think the federal buyers are good, you know, to, to start. And I think the program managers are just as important depending on, um, you know, depending on what you're selling and who you're trying to convince, you know, they're all good. They're all, they're all right. I, I was just thought it might've been a little bit more equal. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. But we can talk about buyers is a about, great way to great way to start. It depends on what kind of company you are. Yeah. Uh, but it's always how how can we get to you, right? Even if you come in and meet with me as a federal employee, I'm going to say right away, how do we get to you? So that's exactly what you're going to say. So I'm glad you're here today. And I, you got to jump, don't you? At some point? Uh, in a little in a little bit. But I, right. I'm just, I'm just really proud of Sam Radar, which put together to help reach those people, Dave, because that's always the challenge for industry you know particularly if you're not in an agency who who do i need to contact and why and uh no. so anyhow so it, i'm excited to see what you're gonna what you're gonna present it's it's pretty crazy so um the other thing that we can talk we'll talk about small business specialists in, in a few minutes um yeah i i tell you um when when you think about the the how big the government everybody was talking about how complex it is it's huge it's confusing all those types of things to be able to narrow it down you need a way to do that and there's books like brian has brian's book is great i have a, a little teeny ebook that i wrote that back way back in the day this guy was from the inside he knows what he's talking about and being able to find those people is a challenge and and be able to get to them is, is also a challenge. So let me see if I can find, I'm trying to find poll number one in there, which is poll, let's see, question one. let's see if this is right. That's not right. I got no idea what I'm doing today. David, oh, here we go. Yep. Here it is. So the, the poll question is, what does the government tell you to do? Now he, he we got somebody here. So if you want to ask him, this is the time to ask him so you can you can engage. What does the government tell you to do? And does it work? So that's that's the real question. There's there's some it's kind of wordy here, but forecast, watch for opportunities on sam.gov. Is everybody seeing that poll? Yeah. Yes. Nobody's answering it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, these are great questions, by the way. I I love I love love this one. Yeah. Me with small business liaisons. I guarantee you, if you talk to contracting officers, you're going to hear one of these things. Aren't you, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Look at forecasts, but they might be a year old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, your forecasters are just like weather forecasters. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so watch for opportunities on sam.gov. Okay. Love it. All right. So does it work? And I love this one. Sometimes, but it takes a lot more than that. Or no, the systems provided do not work. And let's look, zero of nine have one using the government system. How did I know that that was going to be a problem? How did I know? Raphael, how did I know that was going to be a problem? How did you know? Yeah. Well, let's see. <laughs> well, because it's a different ball game altogether. And because most of the communications on the on the gov on the B2G side are different, Dave. And it's people don't know where to start, right? Yeah. That's true. Right. And and they're at, you're asking great questions, right? The, you're saying, hey, how do I win? How do I win, Brian? How do I get? And your 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 first question is, if I like you, what's your first question? Say, I like what you how do I how do I get to you? How do I get to you? How do I get to you? And so that's that's right smack in this character's land. How do they? So that's where you start looking at, and you're, what you're asking really is how. What is the vehicle? So the government can't just say, "Hey, I like you. Here's ten million dollars." You can't just do that, can you? So the question is, how do I get to you? And 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 so Greg, tell tell us a little bit about how you help people get what they need to get to be gotten to. That's a uh, that's a difficult question to answer. I know because <laughs> I didn't even ask it right. 
Um, well, there's a, it depends on how they're asking, like you said, you know, mm -hmm. are they putting out a solicitation, you know, for it? Or they say, you know, if you're on the schedule, I can buy it from you. Um, I guess you, what you want to answer for yourself, does the government buy what I sell first? And then how? So if you're if you're in advanced conversations with an agency and they finally say, you know what, uh, you, the the solution is going to make our agency better. You're going to make our lives easier. And like Brian said, how do we get to you? Um, they may say, are you on the GSA schedule? And you can and you want to be able to say yes. And if if you're not, then you want to say, I'm working on it. Or, they, or I have a partner that can do it. I may have a yeah, prime that I can exactly. run things through. So I, if, if Brian asked me that question, so I'll, I'll throw in on this real quick, because if Brian asked me that question, I'm going to say, well, we'll to, I, I can, we'll figure out a way to do it, but what's your preferred yeah. mechanism for what I do? What's your preferred mechanism? So if, if I sell IT products, Brian Hebel, if I sell IT products and you were with CMS, right? Is mm -hmm. he still here, Brian? Brian, I think. Yeah, Dave, Dave, I'm here. I'm just hopping in the truck. So bear with me. Oh, he's hopping in the truck. All right. So, so, um, if, if uh, that's what I would ask, I would ask, what's your preferred mechanism for what I buy? Because I'd rather line up with what you like, Brian, mm -hmm. than what I want. Or I, because they may not like GSA contracts. There's contracting officers that do not like con GSA. Mm -hmm. and, right. and they, and, or it may be mandatory for them to buy off of an IDIQ. Mm -hmm. That's an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, right, Greg? And, Correct. And so they may they may want to, they may be mandated to buy off a of NASA soup or EFAST if it's FAA or uh, Chess if it's the Army. So there's some agencies mandate what the contract vehicle needs to be. So I can't just walk in and say, well, guy, you take care you, you can buy. Yeah, they could, but they're man it's mandatory to go here first. Or the VA, for instance, actually has a different type of thing. Irene, what is the what is the VA demand in order but before anything, before you could do anything, what is a VA demand? Camera registration? Not that. <laughs> um they, so the, the VLA... VA requires what? Their number one thing is you must be they go to veteran first. That's mm -hmm. right. They go to veteran first. That's exactly right. So when you go, when you have veterans, they're going to go there first. And then they'll start talking about the contract vehicle because it's mandatory by the Supreme Court from 2016 in the Kingdom Wear decision said, hey, vet first. And service disabled, veteran owned is the top drawer. That's it. And then veteran owned then the socioeconomic categories, then the contract vehicles that are associated. So if you're wondering whether or not it's ever going to get down that food chain to you, probably not. That's why you need a veteran-owned partner. And I'll bet you there's some folks here that are on that are on here that are veteran-owned, service-disabled, veteran-owned company. And that's what that's what we want to make sure people know. So Dave. yes, sir. I mean, you're talking. This is what you're talking about now. What seems kind of uh, seems kind of elementary or, or obvious. It's it's so important. A lot of people don't think about that. You know, when you're when people say, "I want to get into the into government contracting, so I need to get on the GSA schedule." Well, who's your who's going to buy from you? Mm -hmm. Do you know who your who your customers are going to be? And once you identify who your customers are going to be, find out what what uh, what their preferred mm -hmm. mechanism is. You don't want you don't want to go over here if they don't use that. You that's know, right. That's it's extremely important. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, and, and I I appreciate you telling me that I need to reinforce that. We've been doing that for years, as you know, because you'll th you, they'll come to you and say, "Hey, we want to get a GSA contract," and your first question is, "Where are your sales going to come from, or what, what's right. your what's your motivation for getting on the schedule?" Well, I hear that there's 40 billion a year in sales. Yeah, that's true. Well, where are your sales going to come from? I don't know. Well, you need to answer that question first and develop start developing those relationships figure out who your customers are going to be talk to them and maybe you don't need to be on the schedule maybe maybe you can maybe you can do all your uh, sales under the uh, the small business threshold and you don't need to go through uh, a lengthy expensive uh, process of getting on the schedule you mean the small business threshold like simplified acquisition is that Correct. what you're saying the one that's like, the one that i'm talking about wow Ooh. look at you setting me up i love it so so 
so two different things. I really appreciate that because there's a lot of folks and people that are here need to hear this. If you just got into this, a lot of folks that are new, there's a group. There are several people, matter of fact, that will tell you, you get on the GSA contract, we will guarantee you sales. That is a f- they call they call they called me and tell me that we I need to get on the GSA schedule. We don't sell to the government. We we're con- yeah. we're a consultant for contractors. They tell yeah. me, yeah, get on the get on the schedule, but they don't tell you what you and I tell people, and that's that uh the vast majority of people who get on the schedule never make a dollar. So Charles Day says easy to find their preferred method, but difficult to speak to anyone who will answer emails and phone calls and give straight answers. And Charles, you are spot on. You're not alone. And it shows up right here. If -hmm. you look here, no competition or short list. It's because they already have somebody, Charles. And you're the disruptor to to the system. Make sure that your brain starts saying, hey, I'm gonna be the disruptor. So the question is, first of all, the who. And how do you get to those folks? And that was a great lead in, Charles, because you actually led it into this. So who are the people that we're after? We're after contracting officers and specialists, program managers, project managers. We talked about those before, right? Cores, contracting officer representatives, and senior management. So we're going to lay this out a little bit for people that are new. Top drawer political appointees. They don't really, they have very much decision-making authority but they're also really going to rely on the senior executives, the SESs, the top-level bureaucrats, as the functionality of how they're going to get things done. And once you get underneath of the SESs, you have folks on the program, you have folks on the procurement side. Really important, everything that you do from here on out should be split in two. One side says, hey, I care about getting the job done. I care about the I care about how great an architect you are or how great your, your IT solutions are or anything like that. That's one side. They care about getting the job done. Brian, on the other hand, he cares about getting the contract done. He doesn't care how good of an arch- architect you are. He doesn't care about the bits and bytes of your solution. So if you're pitching a buyer on how great you are, you're already missing the mark. Pitch buyers on what they do for a living. What they do for a living is they buy stuff and they use vehicles to do it. That's right. This is critical for everybody. I can't tell you as the more I dig into this and the more we do with this stuff with Sam Radar, I can't tell you how important it is for everybody to get that. Because we always want to talk about how great we are and how awesome everything we do is. The buyers don't care. And it's not that they don't care because they don't like you. It's that that's not their world. Brian said, how do I buy from you? What vehicle, in other words, what vehicle can I use to get to you? How do I get to you? Whatever you do. You can be selling products. You can be selling services. It can be complex. It could be very niche oriented. It doesn't matter. How do they get to you? So then what happens is you have a need. The contracting officer does not generate the need. Very rarely. Every once in a while, somebody's going to say, well, I had that. Yeah, you probably t- could, but that's an outlier. Almost always you're going to have a need that's defined by the program that says, I must get this done. And that's why in the handouts, and if you don't have them yet, make sure you get a copy of them. This is what it looks like. The PM is a program manager, throws something over the fence to the contracting officer. That's what creates a true opportunity. Notice something. Both of these are people. It's not a system. They use systems just like you do. These are people. People have needs, people have requirements, and people want to get their job done. Mm -hmm. If we do, if we help them get their job done, Dr. Colonel Raphael, if we help them get their job done, they like us, right? Absolutely. So, uh, Levias, we will get you copies of that for sure. So, one of the main things that we're doing is we're for for on the on the nineteenth. I'm going to be speaking. A lot of folks are going to be there. I can't wait to see everybody. Uh, Greg, I haven't seen you in forever. 
and Peter, I haven't seen you. Um, how cool is it going to be to be in person again? Absolutely. I'm a mean, crazy, right? We've all been through. We've all been through the same thing. So please, if you can, join us. Go to. Um, I, I think there's. We'll get a link. But GPC fifty off saves fifty bucks. So make sure you do that. So the next question that I have is: Do relationships matter? <laughs> Sally White, do relationships matter? More than anything, possibly that anybody can imagine. Relationships matter. Absolutely, Dave. Yep. And we know this because we see it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you in just a minute. So, so uh, Peter Timmons, do relationships matter? Absolutely. My whole business is based on relationships. <laughs> That's exactly right. Rafa, relationships matter? Absolutely. Because remember, you're helping the other party understand that you represent little risks to them and that you're going to help them succeed in carrying out their mission objectives. If you don't have a strong foundation to build that relationship upon, then you're then you're you're starting from scratch. And to them, you're high risk. That's right. And the, if you're risky, see, that's the only thing that really trumps risk. If you're risky, if you're new, guess what? You're risky because they, they don't like new things. They don't like risky business. They don't like risky business. <laughs> Speaking of, where's your guy? Where's your guy? That? Speaking of my man, <laughs> busting out the Tom Cruise risky business. Okay. <laughs> don't worry. Set up. Come on. Perfect setup. Don't, don't worry. I'm not going down to my skivvies and my socks. <laughs> not going to do it. Not going to do it. Uh, but yeah, so this is this is the reason why we know that relationships matter. If relationships didn't matter, and relationships happen, we have them, you have them, I have, everybody here has them. We need to develop relationships with the key division people that are involved. And I'm going to show you something. That this is a report. This is, comes from Sam Radar. Sam Radar sends emails every day that says, this just happened in your marketplace. It's one of the 98% that doesn't that didn't hit Sam.gov, right? First of all, it could go by NAICS, by keywords, by PSEs. We'll talk about that later. But the most important thing that I want you to know is this. Every time you see it, you'll know by the number of offers received. And Brian, and Brian, you still here in the mobile world? Yeah, I'm here, Dave. I'm just driving. He's just driving. So, so Brian, so this this is from from a from a buyer. If it doesn't have the number of offers received as a report that's coming through FPDS, that's a government uh, that's a government reporting mechanism. Contracting officers report to FPDS. If it doesn't say the number of offers received, it usually means what? One. One. I mean, they just didn't call it out because they only had one. They only have one. That's what I would presume. That, and I, I agree with you. The folks that I've talked to, the folks that you know, what does that tell you about the top ones here? This is the latest report. This is this month's report for what's happened to this to, to date to, for the fiscal year. 65% didn't have any notifications, didn't, didn't, didn't have any, right? So that, that means one. You, now, there's going to be outliers, but it usually means one. So when we add, when you, we add these suckers up of the, the percentage of dollars and the percentage of con, percentage, 65 plus nine is 74% of the number of contracts and 36 plus 25 is 61% of the dollars. Relationships matter. Must, must have, must, must have relationships. So that's absolutely true. Now, did I, I already asked that question. I didn't, did I, I didn't even ask it as a hot seat question, really, for everybody. So any questions about that? Um, so Mike is saying, how do you handle the sales challenges with a new product not yet known by the government so they don't yet have any RFP announcements. Mike, that is a great question. So I'm, I'll be glad to jump in on what I would say. Greg Clark, how would you handle that? We just had a conversation about that exactly. Which, which conversation? The conversation that we did a briefing on. If you're wondering if oh, I'm going to yeah, call- the, un yeah. the unsolicited proposals? Unsolicited proposals, right? So, yeah. so here we have- a solution that the government doesn't know about, 
right? So the way that we do it is we look at, we do briefings on GovBrief, we push it out there. There's a methodology, we're, just, we're gonna do this with, um, with your, uh, your group that I talked to the other day, uh, Greg. The building blocks, you need to educate, right, Mike? They need to know, they might not even know that there's a solution to a problem that they have. So you've identified the issue, you have a product that solves this problem, and you need to educate them that they sometimes they have the problem, then you have a solution to the problem, and that you want to be called out in the RFP at some point that you want to be the solution. Anybody else want to throw in on that, Brian? If you yeah, if you yeah. don't know, yeah. you don't yeah. even know that there's an issue, and and yeah. Mike needs a he's got a new product. How does he get so, that in front of you? So Dave, really, you don't want to generally meet with the government people unless you're going to help them solve a problem, what you just mm -hmm. mentioned, save money, tell them about industry trends or new technology, but solving a problem is the one thing. I just heard a guy on Shark Tank being interviewed the other day. I forget the guy's name. Uh, one of the Shark Tank guys, he said, all they put on that show is, he said, if you're going to start a business, don't, don't start a business just because you want to start a business. Start a business because you're going to help somebody solve a problem. That's right. And that was the guy on Shark Tank. But that was kind of interesting. Same with government contracting. They'll meet with you if you're going to help them solve a problem, generally speaking. You know, Dave, this gets, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, this gets back to relationships. So as we develop relationships with people, they talk to us about different needs once they find out our expertise or how we can help. And so that's all part of finding out what the needs are so that if there is a forecast or an RFI or RFP coming out, you may know about it. And if there's not, you can look at unsolicited proposals. So it, again, it goes back to relationships to learn about different things that may not be published or uh, released yet. Yep. And you won't get, so the funny thing about unsolicited proposals is what, Greg Clark? There, there are proposals that they ask you for, even though it says it's unsolicited. <laughs> uh -huh. But the thing that, uh, following up on what Brian said, yes, you want to, you want to, talk to them about how you're going to solve their problem, but um, it's going to be one of two things. Either it's a problem that they're aware of that they haven't been able to solve or, or a problem that you've identified that they're not aware of, right? So if, That's you, right. if, you, can, if you can go in there and say, look, this is that you have a problem that you don't know about and I can solve it for you before it, before there's, you know, an issue or whatever it is, because, you know, Judy Davis, what's the best way to initiate with the VA? Well, that's what Brian said. Figure out a way that you can help them. Yep. Find a need and fill it. If you know, and then the same thing, Mike von Plinsky's, you know, how can you handle the sales challenges with a new product not yet known by the government? Well, you got to educate them and explain how this new product is going to solve their problems, make things better for them. Capabilities and, marketing. Capabilities is not, uh, that's cap getting your stuff out there, brand awareness. It's that's federal right. brand awareness too. You could be Disney on the outside, but if you're not, if you're not doing the work on the inside, that's um, right. First, and then Charles, like, first, can you find someone who cares? Boy, Charles is, uh, Charles is, has got, um, he's not an pulling issue. any punches, is he? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's letting you have it. So well, this is like, it's like somebody else said earlier, you know, it's, it's difficult to get people to call you back. Well, yeah, it is difficult. That's why, that's why it's so rewarding when you succeed. You know, if it was easy, everybody be doing it. Everybody be, be making a lot of money. So what? Good, it's good that it's, diff it's good it's that it's difficult. Because Greg, now you can you have an opportunity to outwork people. But Greg, that's not fair. That's not fair. Because I just I'm signed up on Sam.gov. It should just work. It's difficult, which means most of your competition is going to give up. Oh, there you go. That's where you flip it up. Oh, I love that. Flip that sucker upside down and say, listen, first things first, go in with your eyes open. I love what you said, Greg. Go in with your eyes open, find out who's going to buy what you sell. Even if you can't sell it to them right then because you don't have a GSA contract or an IDIQ or whatever it is that they tell you. But persevere because you're, the, your competition in there that's already doing the work, they want you to give up. Don't do it. What do we say? You got to win a war of attrition. That's exactly <laughs> right. We we're talking, and we're so hot seat question number three. I didn't ask everybody else hot seat question number two. So, but I'm asking this one. How do you find this goes exactly to what you were saying, Judy? How what's the best way to initiate relationships? Charles, same thing for you. Where can I find somebody who cares? Right? So here we go. Sam.gov. 
at PDS Doug, how do you how can you find and interact with decision makers? Pick as many as you got and many, many as you like. Oz the Booze Agency Forecast Industry Days, LinkedIn, somebody. That's J2. I guarantee you that's J Tell. Bowling Alley. <laughs> the bowling alley. So um, so this this and one of the places I'm gonna point you to is the industry days that's happening next week is happening. This is the first one. GSA is not doing it. SBA ain't doing it. VA's uh, NVSBE thing's still not happening. So you, it's been three freaking years since we've been together. And now Sally's jetting all over the place, doing different things in person. Thanks. How starved, let me just ask it. How starved is everybody to just see me for a change? You know, Dave, you're right about that. I mean, back in the day before COVID, I'd go to conferences and I'd walk up to Northrop Grumman's booth or some big prime and they're like, oh, who are you, Echo Wolf? So they had, you know, they wouldn't want to talk to me. They only wanted to talk to someone who could buy billions of dollars. And now they're like, hello, here's a here's a prize. Here's, I mean, they're so excited to see us. And so it gives a real opportunity for all of us here, all of us, 38 participants to engage with those primes or engage with those individuals because they want to see us, they want to connect. It's a whole different world out there right now during this sort of post COVID time where you can really take advantage and you definitely want to go with all the things that, you know, Dr. Mario talked about, like the right kind of business cards, the things that Dave talked about, making sure that you have your brand and your buyer persona. So you want to go to conferences or events where you can really share your superpowers in a humble way, but let people know the value you can add to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with that more. So Mike is saying uh, great ideas for me to pursue. Should I go through the small business liaison? At a specific VA vision to find the buyers that may be interested? No. I'm going to answer that straight up. They, I would find the buyers, then go try to get to the buyers, and then go to the small business liaison. Because if you don't, if you don't do it in that fashion, then the small business liaison is your gatekeeper. That's oh. right. That's right. And do not ever give anybody permission to block you from key decision makers ever. Nope. Right. And they and a small business liaison does not have budget and does not have um, the ability to make a decision. Now, I will say you will find some small business liaisons, as I've talked with Brian about, because he will go to the small business liaisons and ask that exact question. And folks at CMS, if you're calling on CMS, I would say certain agencies may have a better path, but the VA ain't one of them. That's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. And I've sold a lot of the VA. That's so, me. Uh, speaking mm -hmm. of the VA, Dave, I just popped in the chat, the um, executive biographies of the VA. And mm -hmm. so one interesting way is, and Dave lays out this really beautiful plan of connecting relationships in different levels, because as he said, depending on your buyer persona and what you're selling, there are different people and things mean different things to them. So it's really good to have your plan in place so that you can connect with the contract managers, the program managers through Sam Radar, LinkedIn, so you can see those individuals, those influencers, those individuals that might be with the VA, for example, Judy, and then perhaps connect with executives in, in various ways. So you're looking at that multi-prong approach. Yep. It isn't just one. So when when I got into this, so answer your question, Mike, in 2009, I got into this and somebody introduced me to FPDS. And I was like, this is the craziest thing. And I was like, hey, how is it that I'm not seeing these things on, at that time it was FBO, but now it's Sam.gov. And so that created the, 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 the motion that was necessary. I had to find the people and FPDS showed me some of the people, and then we did some of the research. So the, the number one thing that I would say for you, self-serving is amazing. SamRadar.com is exactly that. It'll not only tell you the buyer, it'll tell you in conjunction with who they were just awarding things to. And you're saying, but Dave, that means I'm a loser. Yes, you lost. But that means that you can move on the next one. You, it never showed up anyway. You've got to have a way to get to the path to the other 98%. And that's exactly what it is. So there. Um, and project managers, Erlene, there's only one way. Well, there's two ways to do that. So one, and I'll let other folks talk too, and then we'll then we'll get you guys out of here. Um, well, can I jump in? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. How do you, what's well, your think, thought? Yeah, so 
I mean, it's important. You know, the medium is everything, right? So, and, and you know your audience, Dave. I can't stress this enough. You don't go to a project manager or a program manager or a program director, whoever, right? And sell them on speeds and feeds. You want to sell them on your delivery mechanism, how well your back office is structured, you know, how you can map your skill set and have the people behind you, whether or not you have Six Sigma certified or PMP certified. Oh, well, nice. You know, whether you're CMMI uh, level three or whatever, these are the, you need to tailor your message to market your capabilities the right way. You're doing yourself a disservice by sending a one, you know, catch all kind of capability statement. That's why, that's where we can come in and help. So program managers are interested in key metrics, right? Know which programs they're implementing. Know the agency and department strategic plan, their five-year plan. Where are they failing? Are they meeting, are they hitting these goals? Are they, you know, are they, are they running behind on projects? You know, are there cost overruns? Know these things so that you can speak to them. Right? Love that. Notice that he didn't say anything about a GSA contract nope. or socioeconomic status nope. or anything associated with the procurement side because mm -hmm. the, the program people are the ones that care about those certifications, the professional That's certifications. Right. That's right. So I love that. So to and and so the the two ways there's two ways, one, when we when we look at and you can stick around for a minute and I'll show you how I would do it with Sam Radar and I'll show you how we do it with GovBrief, two ways. Sam Sam Radar takes the you have the buyer. Who is buying something for who? Who is he? Who's the buyer buying something for? For themselves? No. Nope. No. It's for the project manager or the program manager. The so users, who do you know for users. sure, 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, who do you know knows the program manager on that project? The buyer. buyer. The buyer knows. So now, whether the buyer actually tells you that, we talked about risk before. So you walk up to the buyer, tell me who this person is doing $100 billion worth of projects. I don't know you from Adam. Why should I tell you? Exactly. Anything, right? There. So the motivation, just because you have the question and you have the desire for the answer, doesn't mean they're going to give it to you. And that's why books like this, Influence, or books like this, the the Power of Business Report. These are where you get the skill sets to be able to do these things. But you also need something that's important to them that you can pull the thread on. And we're going to talk about with Sam Raynard. Why? Because you can get to the buyer in re relative to something that they just awarded. And it's on their mind. And it's a simple ask. It's not complicated. You don't have to data dump on them yet. They don't care about your capabilities yet. Just get the engagement. And that's why having these live events like we're having next week with the, with the federal business. I'm not putting on the event. I'm just speaking the event. I wish I could put on the event. I did put on the event <laughs> virtually three years ago. Almost. Yes, you did. Oh my gosh. It was crazy. And we'll talk about that another time. But I know the value of these events and I know the value of just human interaction. We're not talking about doing business yet. Just get in front of people and get the dialogue happening. You do that. Good things happen. That's right. And oh, by the way, you may never be able to win. You may never be able to win by unless you team with, with a prime. So the, so the other way that you can get to the project manager is GovBrief. It's the only other way I've been able to figure it out. Pick a topic. We go out to tens of thousands of different project managers because we have the database. We push it out to them and say, who cares about AI? Who cares about chat GPT? Who cares about uh, remote um, healthcare monitoring? We, we sure cared about that a year over the past three years because we couldn't get in front of people. So these are the things that we can, we drive thousands. We just did a, we just did a report. It's thousands of program managers and project managers that we've interacted with, with GovBrief thousands of them that came and said, I have this need. I have a need. You're telling, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about using chat GPT in the agency. Who doesn't care about that? It's one of the hottest things that's happening out there. We had 250 people 
250 program managers come for that. So that's why we do what we do and why we have. So ultimately, this is our number one job, is to build relationships. And if you're spending any time not doing that, so if you're doing federal research and you're and you still got to you got to do things to be able to pre you need to be 100% whatever is in the way of you building relationships get it off your plate. Mm -hmm. If it's administrative tasks that takes you down a hole, get outsource that thing. If it's doing the federal research, outsource it. If not us, outsource it to somebody. Because you got to be about building the relationships. And the difference is you have got to have a tool. You need tools to do it because otherwise you're going to be sucked down a hole. And Sam Radar people have heard me change my tune. I'm like, this has so much information. You don't want the information. Train the system to do it for you so you don't have to do it. And it just tells you this is the relationship you want to pay attention to today. And then that becomes part of your pipeline. So, Dave, I just want to add to what you said. Uh, so last week at um, CR Space, I met with a friend of mine who's like the top uh, biz dev, program manager, et cetera, for Bechtel. And because I was on your chat GPT session and I have a lot of clients who do chat GPT, I asked him, I said, have you heard of chat GPT? It's game changing. So I haven't. So I sent him open AI. So what you just said there is an example. You might know of something based on your research or intelligence, what you're focused on in your own business that that individual will not know. And if you add that value and share that with them, she or he will want to connect with you because they're like, wow, you know, Dr. Morero or Peter or Greg or Irene uh, or Brian or Dave, these are sources of knowledge for me. They're trusted advisors that can help me do my job better. And so I was just shocked that this individual hadn't heard about it, but how could he? he? He did a project in Utah that was $57 billion. That's one project of Bechtel. How could he possibly know about everything that all of us could add value to? And so it's important not to assume that just because someone is super high and capable in their job and they're making those decisions that they know about some of those things that we know about and we can always add value to someone. Oh, and, and I'll just, I don't Brian, you still here? I don't know if Brian's still here. So Brian was a he's 34 years at CMS as a as a as a contracting officer. A contractor, one of us from the outside came in and said, Have you seen this part of the FAR? It says if I have a GSA contract and you're going to put it on GSA, doesn't matter the sin, doesn't matter what contract it is. If it's on GSA, I am asking that you tell me when it comes out. And they shall do it. Three, it was three years before he retired. 31 years, he didn't know that, that 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 little thing. And he's a FAR expert. If there's anything I say about, I don't, I can't stand looking at the FAR. But this, this cat reads this, this book is this thick, and it is loaded with legalese, government legalese. And he knew it backwards and forward. And it was a contractor, to your point, Sally, that brought value to him. Uh -huh. And now he turns around and says, did you know that you can ask this question? It's a very <clears throat> simple question. Right. And it's a beautiful thing. And it's value. So, it has nothing to do with what you're offering. Like, I don't, you know, I don't sell GPT. I don't do GPT yeah. consulting. It's your knowledge adding when it doesn't mean that you benefit. It's simply it, adding to the breadth of knowledge that you're trying to share. Yep. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. We got to get people out of here. And I do want to get final comments from people. Success. Manage your expectations. I was talking about this this morning with this guy. I said, you know, that's disturbing. That's going to take, uh, you know, a, a year, a year and a half to two years. I'm like, yep. Manage your expectations. Because if you go in saying, well, I'm better, I'm different. The government's going to change the way it operates just because I freaking show up. Yep. You're going to be out. And look and act like you belong. That's where Dr. Rafael Moreira comes into play. He's the best at it. Use him. Get proactive. Make sure you're going after people. Be persistent. And as you said, Greg, persevere. It's a law of attrition. Do you want to be the loser? If you don't want to, if you don't want to spend two years doing it and grind out, grind it out, don't start it. Stay out. Don't listen to anybody that gets in your ear and says, well, if you do this, 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 we got a super secret thing. No. Even our stuff, super secret. Sam Radar, best thing that you're ever gonna find. I'm telling you that because I know. I'm telling you, there is no magic bullet. But 
You still need the tools to do it. And you still need relationships and people to help you. But I want to make sure if you're not sure that you want to do the perseverance piece, don't. Just don't. How do you like that for anti-sales? <laughs> but if you do need help, and we all need help, what do you need help with? You want to check out Sam Radar? I'll stick around for a few minutes and show you a couple things. Talk to Raphael so you know like you look like you belong. You definitely need to talk to Rafa. Get a GSA contract or at least figure out if you're ready. Because you can't, some people can't even get GSA contracts, can they? Greg. A lot of go people brief. Can. This is a long question. I know. Uh, a complete federal strategy. You want to talk to Peter about funding, Sally, about networking. And Irene, we don't have you in there, but just say something else. Contact me if you need social oh, economics. <laughs> you you got you got so we got so much here today. From of, of the people that that uh, that are here, I mean it's it's crazy, and this is the coolest thing for me. And Monday roundtables, the best coolest thing because we all get together, we pop in from time to time, and and I, I I'll just let somebody else say it besides me, but Jay could say it. He's there all the time. He's there both of them. He's a glutton for punishment. Any last minute questions before we go? Uh, Beth says, "Thank you. You're welcome." If you have any questions, let us know. Coming up, check GovBrief and make sure you're coming around, coming to the GPC event. It's in DC. If you're around, great. If you are a SAM radar user, you can come to the VIP event after the fact. We're going to have a whole bunch of folks there. We're going to do that. Um, but go uh, check that out. And we will see you next month. Stick around if you want to see Sam Radar. There's a couple of folks that said they want to see how to find the people. I'm going to show you exactly how it works. And then you can make the determination if it's worth it. All I know is the people that are on it, it is insane what's happening. And we don't just say, well, here's your name. Go have fun. We get together every week. You can reach out to federal advisors just like that. We want to make sure you're successful. And then we tie you into people that are here, like Greg, who's been at this. How long have you been at this, Greg? When was uh, St. Louis? Five years ago? Seven I'm years about ago? about you in business. Ago? Oh, 28 years. 28 years. Yep. August Rafa, will be 20. Yeah. Rafa, how long have you been doing this, this kind of stuff and dealing with government? Oh, I, I've been, well, managing vendors and vendor management, 35 years. 35 years. Yeah. I mean- Peter, Peter oh, Timmons, how many billions of dollars have you lent to, to to people? I've lost track, but we've been doing it for 32 years. You lend out two to three billion a year, multiply that by 32. That's a lot of math. That's a lot of cheese. That's a lot of cheese. <laughs> Irene, how long have you been doing this? You used to be an insider too, didn't you? I did. So I worked for the Department of Justice for five years. Um, and then I started up with Dr. Rafael Marrero, who trained me. And in the past year and a half that I've been doing this, I've completed over hundreds of federal applications for socioeconomic certifications. That's yep. awesome. And Sally, how long have you been doing this kind of stuff? Gosh. Ne I mean, networking. Yeah, you you were born working. networking. You came out of you came out of the womb and you were you're passing out business and I, said, and I and I said to the doctor, um, can I get your uh, contact information? <laughs> <laughs> a long time. Very blessed. Yeah, but I, have code, to tell I, you, I have to say that I've been doing it a long time, but I've never learned as much since engaging with this group, since Dave invited me um, right after COVID to join his group. Because what this gives, in addition to all this valuable information for my business and my customers. But it's also this coaching session for all of us. It's a consistent way, instead of sitting here in my office all by myself when I'm not traveling, that I can have today 29 of you and on selling to the government and on other, I mean, it's just, a, it's a great thing in terms of knowledge, coaching, camaraderie, and relationships. So it's been yep. very, thank you, Dave. And I appreciate it, Sally. It's always great having you. And even though you're going to be in Dallas with all the losers down oh. there. Please stop um, saying that. I feel horrible. I like want to like tell my client I can't come and I'll get nah, fired. No, I, David, well, I, David, why don't we do a cardboard statue of Sally and put it next to Tom Cruise? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. What a great idea. I don't know if that's going to work. For what you, you're referencing, my buddy Tom Cruise is going to yeah, be he, there. You'll be able to. This is the real Tom Cruise. He happens to be thinner than the other regular Tom Cruise. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit thinner. Um, 
Yeah. But yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna have some fun at, at the the GPC event. It is um every once in a while you have like a 15 year uh -huh. um <laughs> overnight success. Yeah, yeah, 15 years. That's where we are. Yeah. For those of you who, are whole, who who have been watching this unfold for Sam Radar, it's been it's been 15 years in the making. Mm -hmm. And now it's exploding. It's so you time. and I appreciate everybody. The the team members here know of which I speak. A lot of folks that are new don't know me from anybody. Um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you to do something that wouldn't be good for your business. I didn't know you. I know he did. He was sending me business before he even <laughs> knew me. For God's sake, I didn't know you from Adam. And that was and before a, that's Sam a good Radar. Example, Dave. That's a good <laughs> example, Dave. What you just said about about uh, the referral, you know. When you do business with any one of us, you get access to the whole team. Yeah, that's right. And and we're all bending over backwards. And I and I know Jay knows this. I know other people that are Sam Radar users know it. And that is because. Um, and I'm going to get to Sam Radar in just a minute because I got one pulled up. But we don't want you to fail. And we will tell you. Greg Clark said it earlier. Don't get a GSA schedule yet. How many people who sell GSA schedules would say that? the same number that tell that tell people that the vast majority of people who get on the schedule never make a dollar? Me, probably just me. And and I was saying we because and that's what if you talk about birds of a feather, that's yeah. what we are. We are willing to tell you something that is negative impact to our business, our our cash flow. Because guess what? It's really not negative impact to our cash flow, is it, Greg? Because no, if, I mean I'm I, I'm I'm perfectly fine stockpiling goodwill. <laughs> and and that's the way and, I look at it. And not having irritated customers. That's right. I mean, you know, if, if you look at it, we have thirty million businesses, small, but thirty million businesses in America, right? And only about six hundred thousand, give or take, are on Sam. And even fewer, what is it, Greg, like four, like 20,000 vendors that have master Ooh. services agreements called GSA schedules and other forms of contract contracting vehicles. 15,000 right? companies. There you go. Yeah. So that I means, I, listen, I was being generous, right? Yeah. So 20,000 of the 600 plus thousand of the then 30 million, that tells you right there that if you're just selling stuff that doesn't work, you're in a heap of trouble because- there's millions upon millions of small businesses out there that need our services, right? That may yeah. qualify. And we're not here to look bad and we're not here to take your money if it's not worth it. So. Absolutely. We'll tell you, I'll tell you, stay out. There's a lot of folks that just re responded that said they have less than $500 a month to do it. And I'm gonna tell you what you need to do and I'll, I'll get you another 10% off is this. If this is the only thing that you do for right now, then, You'll be talking to the decision makers. Then you'll have to go to somebody like Greg. You do need a capability statement. Positively, you want to spend some money on that. You got to have your capability statement. You want it to look good, and you want your SAM record to work. But not until you start building relationships. And I'm going to reinforce it right here. So this is actually came in today, right? This is an award. Uh, this is an older one that references one that was on 330. Very rare. Is I get the, the dregs of the thing. I don't get the good stuff. But this, this is for urine microscopic testing. And number of offers received? One. What does that tell you about the relationship that Siemens has with Nestor and Nestor has with, with Siemens? It's solid. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show you something else. Let me clear this off. So I'm just going to run through this. So here's one for four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. One four four with C E X E C Sesex. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but I do know that Tia knows Sesex and. The, the everybody was asking the question. How do you reach out to the buyer and That's have huge. them respond? That's Sam huge. Radar users, you can you can take a look at what Carl Slicer happened to, happened on a Monday round table. He came in, he said, Dave, I did all I did was this. I said, I want to chat with you about the award on 4-4. Tell 
Tia, can we chat about that? And she responded, sure. <laughs> Wasn't Tia. It was somebody like Tia. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Now here, this probably did hit Sam.gov. Why do you know that? Because number of offers received, seven. But nonetheless, you can now you may want to reach out to the prime because you may wind up wanting to talk to people at the prime. Let's see, zero dollars. Why would you care about zero dollars? What does a zero dollar mean? Maybe a blanket purchase agreement or an IDIQ with Federal Express, a little company like that. And, and here's another thing that you can do here. Who do you know? So, so Anila with DEA just wrote a contract for mailing evidence with Federal Express. If you would like to do sub work for Federal Express, does Anelia know the right person at FedEx? Yep. And that's an easy ask. Not asking for the project manager in an organization. So here's one for $50,000. Number of offers received, doesn't say. And all this does is churn through all these. Here's a half, over a half minute, 600000 almost. $600,000. One offer received. And these folks know these people. And guess what? Now you do too. And all you need to do every day is hit this button. Say, I want to chat with you. And some of these have phone numbers too. You'll probably see this as well. Let's scroll through these. Here's one that has with NASA that has a phone number. Let's scroll down here a little bit. That doesn't have a, have a phone number. This is $10 million. $10 million went with Deloitte. $59 million for the base plus options. This says it's a large contract. So now you want to reach out to Deloitte and say, hey, I would love to do that. You know, this could be George. It could be Jorge, right? It could be Jorg. But whoever, however, this is with the VA. Here's a question about the VA. Finding the people in the VA right here. This is the only way, it's not the only way, because we do this with the intelligence. And we, when Dr. Raphael would, would refer, before he was a colonel, he was he was referring us people, and we were charging $4,500 for the yeah. report. Right, Rafa? That's right. We would do a full intelligence report. And guess what I tell people now? Don't do that right now. If you need it, we can always run it. Sign right. up for Sam Radar. And then every day it does the work for you. It's yep. so helpful. So it Jorge, is. so Jorge, I just Jorge. looked him up on LinkedIn. So even though he only has five connections, I can see he's with the Marines. He was with the Marines. So when I talk to Jorge, I can first of all sort of thank you for your service. I can also see he went to National University. Maybe I know someone. So this, what Dave is showing us right now, is intelligence to help us make informed decisions and develop those relationships we need in order to get to where we need to do to share what we have to offer. Never hurts to check LinkedIn. If you're reaching out to them, fine. But the biggest thing I want people to do is do it. Got it. If you don't have, just do it. And I love what you do. Because when you have the meeting with them, then you want to say, hey, you schedule the meeting with them? Make sure you know a little bit about them. But I wouldn't have known to even look at Jorge without Sam Radar is my point. I would, not, I would not know who to look at on LinkedIn if I didn't have this coming in my feed every day so I can see who those individuals are that are making the very decisions I need to know about. Yeah, love it. Dave, I got a scoot. All right, you do your thing. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna show you how you can save a couple bucks for the for this. So if you go to samradar.com forward slash FBC. So we are teaming with the FBC. FBC is putting on the event next week. I've been... Dave Powell and I have been talking about this for three years since we did VFedCon, which was the first ever virtual federal conference. First ever, 100% virtual. We did it. Not, not FBC, we did it. And then we decided we don't want to do that anymore because FBC does this for a living. We do this for a living. So if you go here, forward slash, samradar.com forward slash FBC, you got special pricing. It saves you an extra 10% and it locks it in for life. As long as you stay a member, it's this rate. It's month to month. Don't let it lapse. 
Nope. Because I'm I'm going to tell you something. This this three forty nine is going to four ninety nine a month, and then there's other benefits with this that you're getting right now because it's all woven into the FBC. I can't tell you what that is yet. I'm just telling you it's coming. And it's going to be wild and it's going to be good. So all you have to do is start your free trial. It automatically puts in the 10% off. Start it. You get a free trial for seven days. That's going away too, ladies and gentlemen. Because we're going to start to restrict the market. You're going to say, why are we doing that? I'm going to tell you why. Sally asked me this question too when I started talking about it. I'm going to restrict the market on using price. Because we can only service so many SAM Radar members and give you the benefit that you signed up for. You signed up so we could give you what's important to you. Out of the 20,000 that are done every day, it tells you what's important to you. There's a ton of more information that you can get from it. Don't spend your time doing that. Your number one job, build relationships. Get out in front of these people. And if you don't, they're going to keep buying from the people they already know. Because that's what they do. So do it. I appreciate you guys being here as always. Dr. Rafael Marrero. Hey, so, uh, Dave, I just want to say, as an economist, I really stand behind Dave's product. Uh, from, from Just from an econ and numbers standpoint, I look at numbers all day, right? And I can tell you right now that if I were in your shoes, right, and I were looking to expand my business with, a, with an institutional client, such as the government in this case, right? They get repeat business and promote my products and services. This type of actionable intelligence makes all the difference in the world between having a six to 12 month point of entry or a 24 to 30 month point of entry. Just nibble on that, swish on that, and please get back to Dave. I highly, highly recommend his, his uh, software as a service solution. It's great. I stand by him. He's a great guy. I appreciate that, man. And going back to I what we were talking them. about earlier, um, you know, I had a problem. Dave had the solution because, you know, my, my biggest issue is clients will get a certification and they'll be like, well, now what? I, I can't get any contracts. I can't find anything. Sam Radar. So thank you, Dave. It's a great point. Uh, you're welcome. And that's another one, right? And eight, so getting a GSA contract is like getting a physical. Mm -hmm. yeah. Getting an 8A, <laughs> getting an 8A, that's a full blown proctology yeah, exam. That yeah, is a that probe, is, yes. It's it is a deep probe. Yeah. And and yeah. and so and and so just just to lend on that, I really appreciate that, Irene, because years ago I had somebody who was running the 8A association, the association of 8A, I don't remember what it was, but he came to me and said, Did you know that five of nine get nothing? Five of nine after doing what they do to get a G, not just GS, getting an 8A? Yeah. Not oh that, my gosh, my that, head. Babe? Why and is I that? mentioned no help from the SBA because the SBA promises, oh, the 8A is a program and we're going to help you. They don't. Not going to yeah. help. Because they Dave don't want to market it. nothing. Nope. It's they a gym membership, Dave. It's a gym membership. It is. I, I love that, too. Yep. In, the, yep. in the 8A, it takes them an average of four to five years to get their first contract. So being proactive, taking advantage of these relationships, and getting on SAM.radar, and identifying is going to shorten that process, as the doctor has just mentioned. And I love what you just said there, because you you have a lot of experience with eight A's and funding eight. A's. That's one of your yep. that's one of your keys. Yep. So mm -hmm. when you're funding eight A's, and you know that it takes three to four, maybe five years before they get their first contract. It's a nine year program, by the way. That's all you got. You got nine, right? So right. unless you went through COVID, so you get an extra year, right? Right. You get an extra year, but it's a nine-year program. And to your point, Irene, it they're saying, hey, you know, it's you got the program. Now you got to go exercise it like just like anything else. You got to get proactive. And I've I've had so many different people that were coming to me in the last couple of years. Oh, the 8A pro, oh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, 8A gives you the ability to sole source for no other reason except you're you're an 8A. Mm -hmm. You can get a sole source contract for millions of dollars, not just little stuff. It could be millions of dollars. Oh, yeah, like hurricanes, like hurricanes in Puerto Rico. We have clients that, you know, that are in the security industry. And guess what? They got a very, very large FEMA contract 
right after right after the hurricane to yeah. secure all of the federal facilities in Puerto Rico. There you go. You know, Agri and it's not just FEMA yeah. either. It's not that it's just not no, just no, emergency. I mean, just hurricanes there every year, right? In, yeah. in Florida too. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. So anyway, if you can make it, come meet Tom. Get your picture taken with Tom. Um, we have some special stuff going on. Uh, I'm going to be speaking you? next week. Uh, really great. I appreciate you guys. I love this kind of stuff. And uh, as you can tell, we go over because we just like hanging out together. So I really appreciate you all. Thank you. You're all welcome Thank for you. being here. And, and hopefully uh, to get signed up before it's too late. Yep. And Dave, See you next week. Yep. Make sure that Rob, good. make sure that Rob or someone in the audience is uh, videoing you speak, like some parts, yes. and then have them post on LinkedIn, Twitter, and I will like and share and right, help engage. Page. And and ta tag uh, Tom. <laughs> yeah, tag us. Yeah. Tag Tom. Thank Tom. All Thank right, Tom. see y'all. All right, guys. Bye. Good Thank to see you. you. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.